joy is so important. And uh, nine times out of ten, people don't work out, not because they can't do the job, but because they're just the wrong person. Right, exactly. Because what happens is, is in the interviewing process, when a person's coming in interview, and particularly the way the economy is now, people are interviewing and interviewing, and they've learned how to come in and talk to someone and put on that interviewing mask, is what I refer to it. Mm -hmm. And they have to put on interviewing mask, and then six months later you go, I just didn't understand this. I didn't realize that this person was going to be this way or to be that way. And, and then they make that hiring mistake. And as you know, that hiring mistake costs. Very expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. Well, Dave, talk, talk just a little bit about how we got here. You know, I, I like to say, uh, you know, tell us, tell us how we got here. Uh, don't go back to 1963, but give us, give us a little bit of your background. <laughs> Backgrounds, I spent 32 years in the corporate world, uh, worked for uh, a major snack food manufacturer here in uh, Charlotte. Grew up in that company, and they taught me everything I needed. Go to on, know. you could say it. Lance. Lance is delicious. <laughs> Lance, I still eat a lot of it. Uh, so what happened was, is um, uh, fast forward, uh, I spent a lot of years at Lance. I was a safety director. I was a project manager. I was the superintendent of the chip plant and uh, comp director and various jobs. And all that, I say, really set me up for what I ended up doing at Lance the last number of years, and that was the Senior Director of Training and Organizational Development. We had an issue uh, at Lance with turnover. We had a 70% turnover for our field sales reps. Wow. And as we know, 70% turnover with 1,500 employees just doesn't cut it. So we researched and found a company out in Maui called Maui Analysis Group that provided a, had an assessment tool allowed us to start using that and reduce turnover from 70% to 24% in a year. Hmm. And so I started looking at it from a training and development standpoint because the technology measures actually critical thinking and motivators. And so what I did is I said, well, can I use this for uh, developing and working with managers and working with employees? And found out that, yes, the technology is there to allow us to do that. So uh, 2010, uh, I got caught up in a workforce reduction, uh, and at, at, at that time I said, I don't want to work for anybody else. I want to take this understanding of this technology I've got and spread it with the others and allow them to to reduce turnover and develop their employees. And so, You, I, you know, it's, what's really interesting about this, for, you took what was actually a system process outside of the corporate setting and turned it into a business. I mean, it, this was not a business that you decided to do. It, it was a concept that you turned into a business. Talk about that thought process in your mind, because that, that is interesting, and, and it, there's a area of, of calculated risk to that. Well, there is. Uh, fortunately, I was in a, a situation or a financial situation to where I didn't have to panic and go out and say, I've got to f just find a job doing something. Uh, and so with the support that I was able to do uh, and talk to uh, Greg Smith, who was the president of Maui Analysis and a good friend of mine. And, and Greg said, David, it take me seven years to teach someone the understanding of the technology that you've got. Let me set you up as a fully independent distributor. I'll give you access to everything that I've got. Just hang a shingle, start doing it because you love it, you're passionate about it. Uh, and so I started off slow uh, and got a few clients. At the same time, my wife and I uh, were taking care of four grandkids so they wouldn't have to go through daycare. Uh, I, was, uh, I have uh, land in Huntersville, so I was taking care of the, of the grass-fed beef that uh, we raise on our property. So I was able to take care of my mom and take care of grandkids and start a business. And fortunately, and it's blessed to be able to start it slow. And, and well now all the grandkids are grown uh, in school and everything's going good I'm just <laughs> rocking and rolling you notice he has all three things we discussed in our article yes. today yes you know, so he had the financial foundation he had a mentor and the developer of the, uh, exactly. of the process exactly and uh, and you're passionate about it because you had used it and it worked I've got the passion because what happened is and, and it is a frustrating part of, of this business and what I'm doing is is when I talk to different folks uh, and they say, oh, yeah, we've, we've done this. We, we've assessed people. We, we've used these tools. We use that tools. And I have to, in all due respect, say not to the level that we provide it and not to the level that we have it because uh, the folks that I'm working with, they've actually been able to take the different assessments and integrate them into one product. And 
because most assessments are just pages after page after page of data points that you say, I've got to interpret this. The difference is, is they've been able to take it and the answers that we provide are just that. They are answers. Once a person does a survey, they, we tell them in plain English what they need to do. And that, that is, there was two points I was going to make, uh, and that is one of them, uh, which is, gosh, you know, Wayne is really good at these disc assessments, but you need Wayne to interpret the darn thing, mm-hmm. you know. So he'll print one out for me, and I'll look at it, and okay, you know, yeah, I can tell I'm going to be kind of high in this area. But then I really don't know how to use it, so it takes somebody to actually um, apply that information. Yeah, is that partly, the case here, too? It's partly the application, right? I mean, and you get involved in that, do you not? Some, uh, as needed. Uh, generally, what happens is the way that we report the information is it comes out in plain English, and it says it, it general descriptions, um, and also gives the. It doesn't have the points that you have to interpret. It actually comes up in paragraph form and saying this is a person's general performance, and this is a screening and hiring recommendation that we give. So after reviewing two or three of them. Uh, the the client generally can run it on their own. Uh, I set up the account. I set up a, a link. You say client. <clears throat> you're talking about the employer, the one the employer. making the hiring. Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. uh, exactly. And so what happens is, is they 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 have their own personal link, and they go in, and so they say, I I want to assess this particular candidate or these three or four candidates. We suggest that they take the top three candidates that they've got, assess the three, and then we actually give a mathematical score as far as how they do, what their strengths are, what their performance blocker is going to be. And we actually give a hiring recommendation saying this person, based on their credentials, should be a viable candidate or above average candidate or whatever the case might be. Yeah. Now, go right ahead, Wayne. Well, I was going to say that's so important. And at least, um, so it's not only to help with hiring, but you could use the information for, you know, developing them as a better employee and develop their leadership <laughs> capabilities, et cetera, et cetera. Am I correct? And maybe working together with others on teams and things like that. Exactly. And that's the part that I really, really love. Because what happens is is we all have uh, uh, professional performance strengths that we've got, things that we bring to the table. We also have our performance blockers. And so what we come back and we say, what we need to do is feed our strengths and starve our blockers. Uh, I'll give you an example for me. I'm risk averse. And when I assess myself, I find out that when it comes to making that that tough, uh, high impact decision, uh, I'm I leave the data gate open too long. I, I notice he was risk averse because he showed up a half hour early this morning, make <laughs> sure he was here on time. So that, anyway, and because I have that fear, uh, I ha- because I'm aware of it, I really research something uh, before I make that decision. And at certain levels in an organization, that was a hindrance to me. That was a blocker because I would not make that tough decision because it affects employees which ties into the motivators that we also assess and i'm very uh concerned with how things affect people so because of that i knew that so that when i had to make that decision i was able to coach myself and to go ahead and say you got enough information Make now, decisions. what's different about what you do and what I've seen Wayne do many times so well is the disc assessment. What's the difference between the two of those? <laughs> we use the disc assessment. That's part of the of the three things we've got. We have found out that human performance is not a single uh, performance tool, uh, as disc is one. And disc is good. Again, mm-hmm. again, we use it. The difference is is the technology that we use. It measures a person's, uh, and we use it. We call them multipliers. Uh, it measures a person's critical thinking, their ability to make decisions, um, and because it's different. Wayne and I might, we might act the exact same way. Our behaviors, our communication style, our discs might be exactly the same, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we arrive at decisions the same way. It just means we deliver those decisions into the world. Because the human brain, it's not only how you deliver those decisions, but it's based on your values, your motivators, your drives, what you're passionate about, and your ability to make those decisions. And so our technology integrates all three of those into one report. So walk me through the process of doing this. If I'm an I'm a employer and I'm thinking about hiring some people, got two or three of them in mind, 
walk me through how how you would work through this with them. All right, I've just signed you on as a client, and and you're saying I need to hire someone uh, to be a, a, a new control board operator, <laughs> whatever the person. Sir, the, 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 the whatever he's doing over there. He <laughs> has already. He's a genius. He has already <laughs> figured out what we need. Yes. He's a genius. Somebody to run this darn place. Yes. He's a genius. Well, I'm going to tell you how to find the right person. <laughs> so what happens is you as a client. Because somebody's doing a bad job around here. <laughs> Some, uh, so what happened is I would give you an assessment link, and it would be your own individual link. And you say, all right, I've got, I put out resumes. I've, I've got 10 people that have applied for the job. So based on that, I've narrowed it down to the top three people. We assess those three people, and then I come back and I tell you, all right, based on uh, Zach's, uh, let's say Zach and Wayne and uh, Suzanne, based on this, this is the way that they're going to make decisions. This is their ability to make decisions. This is what's driving them and motivating them. I'm going to tell you their ideal work environment. And so I might find out, let's say we're hiring Zach and looking at Zach, and let's say that he has this uh, uh, this, this ability to not want to come to work. Well, yeah, because we actually measure work ethic. Exactly. I was, I doesn't was, want to please the people he's supposed to please. Is that was, on there too? Well, possibly. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines is that he's the type of person that has to be involved with groups of people and teams of people and out there and going and can't sit here with headphones on and, and on a control board mm-hmm. punching buttons. And so we say that would not be the match versus Wayne we might say Wayne's the kind of person that yes he's here Love very supportive what <laughs> loves to uh, work with the folks and so we were able to identify what you need and then you decide the reports come straight to you uh, right. once you learn to read two or three reports going forward if you're hiring 10 15 20 people or whatever the case might be I'm only involved if you got a question and you make a phone call saying, I got this report and I don't quite understand. Um, go ahead and, and uh, tell people listening how they can reach you if they want to talk to you. They can reach me by my website is www.dbeard.com. Uh, D is in David, beard.com. Uh, and all my contact information is there on that. Uh, so, uh, and that's the easiest, quickest way. Okay. Uh, Let me ask you another question because you and I were talking off the air. I was talking about how I've got uh, some deals going on and, and the, the seller's going to have to pick a partner because she's going to keep some interest in the business. And you said, well, I can really help her with that because we've got two people uh, going after the same business. Walk me through how that would work because i got to be honest with you, I've had some really bad partner experiences and this would be a wonderful <laughs> thing to do. Um, for some business people that are considering taking on a partner to make sure that that um, it's a good fit. Can you walk me through how that would work? <laughs> yes. If it was a situation to where if, uh, if it was trying to decide if these two partners would be a good fit, what we do is we would assess both of them. Uh, and then we would be able to come back and actually do a uh, analysis between the two and compare the two. Uh, I could tell you what's driving each of them, what motivates them. It might be that... Um, uh, for example, uh, person A might have a low um, uh, scoring, uh, so to speak, in getting results. They are more interested in the social part and doing things, have a very low sense of urgency. The other person might say, hey, it's all about getting results. That's the number one driver and making quick decisions. Well, th- without knowing that, then they probably wouldn't work together. They wouldn't communicate well together. And a report comes back and it tells that, it does that. Also, it tells how to communicate with each other, how they can work better with each other. It also provides their ideal work environment, uh, the way that they would strive. It would tell you their motivators, what they want, what they need, what they've got to have. And so the person could individually look at it and say, you know, this position, this job uh, actually uh, provides this, and that's what I want. So it would be a good fit. Right. And so you recommend both sides take this. Do they share that information with each other? Is that what it works? Ideally. Ideally. They don't have to. Uh, whenever we work with groups and we work with teams, what we do is we actually just share only what they would be willing to share. Uh, and primarily that's the communication aspects of it. Because we actually will say, when you're communicating with Wayne, this is how you need to communicate with him. This is how you don't want to communicate with him. <laughs> Let's don't get started on that. <laughs> hey, David, that's a great that's a great service. Tell them how they can get hold of you again. Uh, www.dbeard.com. 
uh, or Tim Beard is B E A R D. That's correct. Or uh, email would be uh, D Beard at bus concept b u s c o n c e p t bus concept because that's what the process is called the bus concept getting the right person on the right bus in the right seat oh, clever in the right seat hey david thanks for joining us this morning thank you very much